Number one priority is, is uh, helping to create more jobs in Portland, make sure that uh, everybody's got good paying jobs. It's a, uh, a, a big strength that I bring to this position and a, a clear difference with my opponent is, you know, with Ethos last year, we had 78 employees on our staff and uh, those are jobs that I created. You know, I started off this nonprofit from zero. I was a graduate student at Harvard University and uh, hearing about all the budget cuts that just destroyed music education programs in the schools. And so when I graduated, flew back to Portland, slept on a friend's couch, and started up this nonprofit from just my credit card. And you know, 10 years later, uh, like last year, we had uh, 2,200 students that we had served. We had a staff of 78 people on our payroll, budget of about a million dollars. And we have started up over 120 after school music education programs. Education obviously is very important to me as well. Spent the last 10 years working on equality and education for Portland uh, kids and uh, done it through uh, music education. And I really believe there's a lot we can do at the city level to help students uh, regardless of their economic background. And one particular thing I think is very important that we have a, an opportunity as a community uh, to do something is the Children's Investment Fund. And that's coming up for renewal this election as well. Vibrant neighborhoods and uh, housing opportunities for everybody as well is extremely important to me. Housing, if, if you don't have a place to live in Portland, nothing else matters, you know. And I've seen too often, from living in North and Northeast Portland for 18 years, for the past 18 years, I first moved here in 1990 to uh, attend the University of Portland, and um, I've seen too many families being pushed out of Portland because they can't afford to live here anymore. And so, for me, home ownership and affordable housing, fairly distributed around the city, are critically important and something I'm really going to be pushing for on City Council. Uh, City of Portland gave $10 million to the different school districts to help bolster the programs again. And, you know, fortunately, this past legislative session, the state has stepped up and gave the largest budget ever for, for the schools. And so I'm really fortunate. I, I, I'm glad for that. And, uh, we, you know, it's again, it's about inspired leadership and making sure our schools, which I believe is absolutely important. And um, I, I don't want to hear that's not our jurisdiction. I, I think there are lots of things that the city can do. If it's from funding directly, the city has taken over some of the costs of upkeeping the grounds around the schools. Programs like CHIF are very important too because um, if we keep kids out of trouble in the after school hours, you know, economists have found and agree that for every one dollar that we spend in uh, investment in early childhood education, we save $17 later. And so for me, that investment in our schools and our kids is absolutely important. It's something I've been doing for the last decade with Ethos and uh, keeping kids out of trouble, keeping them away from drugs, violence in the streets that would you know, otherwise rob them of their future. If we can invest in kids uh, programs like uh, the Children's Investment Fund, programs like Ethos, after school things, it's a great investment. Um, we have had a great partnership with the Police Activities League over uh, the past several years where um, the uh, PAL is what they call it, uh, helps fund the program so that kids can make uh, hip hop beats and record their own CDs and stuff and our instructors from Ethos go out and, uh, you know, help provide these services, but it's just tremendously important. We also have free drop-in classes for uh, kids on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Ethos so they can come in and make their own CDs or DVDs and hip-hop. And it's about positive influences and, you know, just aside from how great music is, which I believe every kid should absolutely have in the school day, it keeps kids out of trouble. And I, I think it's a uh, good investment and uh, it, it pays off for the kids themselves and for our community in general. I do not support Mannix's uh, initiative. It's Initiative 61. I believe there's an alternative that provides a better solution, uh, Initiative 57, and with increased funding for um, you know, rehabilitation, 
uh, I think that's the key right there. And throwing people in jail is, you know, and, and I know the reason he did it. It's a gimmick, and uh, he did it because it pulled well. And But, you know, we need to keep people out of jail. We need to, if they get hooked on drugs, we need to give them rehabilitation opportunities so that they, they can be, um, you know, contributing members of you know, our society. And, but just throwing them in jail does not make sense. It's, you know, we've got an overcrowded system already, and I absolutely do not support his initiative. I think there's a lot we can do, and it's directly tied to some of the issues with our, our police system as well, because we've seen some incidents time and time again where uh, people, citizens who have some mental health issues have been, um, you know, even shot by police. And uh, so I think working with the county, we can come up with a number of, uh, you know, help fund their programs. The county has been dealing with a massive budget shortfall for the past couple of years, and it's directly tied to actions the city of Portland has taken in the past, and it's particularly with the urban renewal areas. You know, we've got 11 urban renewal areas around Portland, and they really, uh, they do help to reinvigorate those parts of town, but the downside is, is it directly pulls money from the county services. So for every dollar that we spend in an urban renewal area, about 30 cents is directly taken away from the county. And we need to recognize that when we're balancing these projects, which can reinvigorate you know, certain neighborhoods, but understand that every dollar we're spending, we're taking $30, or 30 cents away from the county, you know, and it's like, we want these services. And, you know, when you look at some of the benefits that urban renewal has had, they've reinvigorated certain parts of town, for example, the Pearl District, but it's time to let, you know, them back on the, the tax rolls so that we get the benefit of the investment we've made as a community, that we can fund some of these programs as well. For me, it's very important to have a wide variety of options for residents, and that entails affordable housing so people can rent, um, you know, apartments or houses or condos or whatever so that, you know, they can stay, but also very important and something that we haven't had as much emphasis on as I would like to see is home ownership. And there is a very large gap with minority populations and, um, you know, last budget that, that was recently passed, they put uh, $4.5 million into the home, um, you know, project with the the city to help encourage some more uh, housing ownership opportunities for especially minority populations. I think it's brilliant. I think we need more funding, especially for that. If you let people own their own homes, they don't have to move. You know, they th if the property values increase, their their main asset increases. So, uh, you know, for me, I was really fortunate to be able to buy a house what eight years ago from uh, my grandfather. And, you know, fortunately was able to get in. I mean, the value of the house is, you know, and all the houses around have doubled in the past, you know, eight years or so. But it's become unreachable for most people. And I think it's absolutely pivotal to have those home ownership opportunities. We've had a disinvestment in, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure for emer emergency management. Fortunately, this um, past budget that uh, went through city council, they added $4 million for capital improvements for the city's emergency management um, preparedness. So I, I'm excited about that. It's starting to make up some of the gap. We, need, we do need more investment, and we need good leadership, too, as well. You know, the, the county's gone through some issues with uh, some leadership there. But it's about really working together uh, because if a uh, problem impacts the city of Portland, like, you know, to a uh, you know, very large uh, disaster or something, it's going to impact the county, Multnomah County, Clackamas, it's going to impact the state, and we really need to work together to make sure that everybody's prepared to address these issues. It does require investment. I'm glad to see that we're uh, starting to get back into the mode of investing in this, but we do need some more and we need to get some more uh, good leadership.